Another day, another legendary fish adventure here in Caldwell the Angler. We are on Norway targeting the legendary Atlantic salmon. And as always in these videos, we'll be talking about where to catch them, how to catch them, what equipment to use, and all that good stuff. And it starts with the location. So if we open up the map here, the legendary salmon has been being encountered just out here where these two guys are fishing. No surprise, a lot of people are going after them. The addition of the tokens for catching the legendaries really makes it worth your time. And I think for starters, we're going to set up right in this location. So just to show it again on the map, we are just outside the Glacial National Park outpost. It's on the east side of the map here. And there's a little island in this lake. Just kind of off of that, we're just north of it here, is where he's being encountered. So as for equipment, we are running with the 110 pound rod, which I cannot pronounce. We had the visionary director reel, 55.12 pound braid. That is the heaviest line that can go on this rod. And we have the spinner. It's a two outsized hook that we earned, I think for getting to level 40. And we're going to see if this can land him. Worst case, if we do get bites that are not him on this spinner, decent chance it's going to be good sized salmon. And if we can catch a gold or a diamond in the process, that is all the better. Now, when we caught this guy last time, we saw him from the surface. I don't necessarily know that that is typical. So I hear, okay, there is a sound that plays with the legendary salmon. I don't know if that was him. I don't think it was, but it's basically a little ringing sound. I can just hear it in my left ear, which basically, as you know, you're in the right area. Now to me, it kind of sounds like, oh, I think I, that's him right there. Okay, we're gonna bring this by him. I don't know if you guys can see that, but just to the left of where we're casted, is him. I think he's going to hit this. This is going to be interesting. So, another thing about the last time we caught this guy, I think he was maybe not as tough to catch as he should have been. And that was four months ago. So I am curious if this is going to be a tougher fight. We're going to try to get tension on the rod. The one big advantage to where he is right now, and he is really trying to pull line. He's basically going to run into that island. And I think that keeps us from basically running out of line. But going to keep the drag low for now. That's already putting a little above half tension and just primarily focus on rod tension where we can. And we're struggling to really keep good rod tension. He's going all over the place. This is more or less what we want it to look like, but it's never staying that way. And you can see he's over 200 feet already. I'm going to slowly kind of bring this drag up every now and then just so that we don't get into like the dark red. This is kind of working though. We're pulling him back this way. We're just going to keep doing that as long as we can. Looks like he's going to pull more line out, but any chance we get to do that, bring him back our way a little bit, keep that tension on the rod, it tires him out, and it gives us a better chance of actually landing him. This is what we want to see. It is so tough, though. He just wants to turn and take that tension off the rod, which is the whole key in tiring him out. This is looking really promising already. We have him to 130 feet. He's still running a little bit. What you'll notice is the tension's not as high. So when that happens, we can bring that drag percentage up a little bit more. When you're fighting big fish or even just big fish for the equipment size you're using, that's the way to do it. As you fight, the fish is going to get tired out and it's not going to be able to put as much tension on the line. You start at low drag and just bring it up bit by bit as you see that tension meter <laughs> going lower. We're into 60 feet now. I think we're going to see that point. I'm afraid to bring the drag up very much more because you got to remember with braid, it does not stretch. When it's ready to break, it just snaps. 50 feet, I think we're going to go up a little bit more. Going to get a little more tension on the line. We're hauling him right in right now, but I'm curious if he's going to take off or if we can land him at that. We can see him under there <laughs> and up there. Look at him. Are we going to land him here? Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. That was not good. We got way high on the tension there. So he just dove down. Going to just bring this up. Thank goodness we got that drag turned back down. Okay. It looks like he's just going to take off again. We're just going to get tension back on the rod and slowly tire him out. We do that again, we'll have him. And as if nothing ever happened, he's nearly 300 feet. We got to start getting him back this way. I'm bringing the drag up a lot and just trying to pull him back. Because I, okay, okay. I think we have 328 feet of line or something like that. We cannot let him get to that point or he can just run it right off the spool. Trying to just drag him back and do whatever we can. That's insane. We had him here. Ah, that was insane. We had him. I think we're about to start this all over again. We got him to hit again. And what we're going to do is just try to have more tension on the rod, particularly in that second phase of the fight. I think we can get him into the boat again, but the second phase will be 
a lot more interesting. You guys have seen how this works. I'm not going to show all of it. But hopefully when we get to that second phase, it'll go a little better. So either we land him now, or we get into this same position once again. And I think this might be where he takes off. So what we have to do, we're going to go a little lower on the drag, but we just cannot let him run this to 300 feet. We're going to be pumping, low drag, just tire him out so that we can slow him down maybe in that 250 area. We can't have this happen again. And already, I think I can say, this is the approach. Every time he pulls on that line, we're taking the rod as far back as we can and just giving as much fight to him as possible. When we get a chance, pumping a little bit, trying to slow him up, we go up on the drag a little bit as he's hitting 200 feet. We just have to slow him up. Man, he has a lot of fight in him though still. We're at like 200, but this has been so much better and I think we're getting a little bit taken out of him instead of just letting him pull that line. We're at 235, we have 100 feet of line. He's still pulling a little bit. Usually when we lose tension like that, he goes, but we're able to pretty much slow him up and just keep on tiring him out. I think this is the approach. I think we panicked too much and just let him pull that line so we didn't get too high on tension like that. I think we have to play with fire a little bit. And it is absolutely working. 140 feet in closing and we're basically just towing him right in right now. I'm not willing to say he's about to just give up considering what we've seen. I'm gonna bring the drag up until we get close. When we get him under like 30 feet, I'm dropping this down to like 30%. We saw we almost snapped it, trying to land him the first time. But have we officially tired him out? He's still seven feet down there. Let's drop this drag way down just so we don't lose him at the last second here. We're at 10 feet, look at him. Oh, that was bizarre. I don't wanna pump this too much and bring him up here because I'm afraid of snapping the line. He's right there. I'm just gonna move this, try to maneuver around so that we can land. Do we have to pump it? I think we might be okay at 30%. I'm pretty sure he's tired out. We just need to find this spot where we can land him, and we got him. What a fight. 10 minutes on top of the 10 to 15 from last time. 5.24 feet, 80 and a half pounds on 55 pound braid. I bet you could probably do this. Maybe on like 40 or 30 pound braid if you did it just right. But man, that was all we had to get him in with the 55 pound braid he's so big that it doesn't entirely fit on the screen I'm gonna try to get a screenshot at least with the entire tail on the screen and i did not expect that to take 50 minutes i thought when we hooked him on like what's our first or second cast that we were set it's not a terribly long fight but it is as like difficult i guess and as scary as any fight we ever have, because it's constant. He's pulling that tension, he's, that tension meter's going up to the, the red color. That was wild. That was absolutely wild. It was pretty cool having everybody kind of stand around and watch that one too. Now I mentioned at the beginning the legendary tokens, and of course we still wanna work on getting diamond and gold tokens, and much like last time we were here on Norway, I wanna go for Arctic Char. So we've got the hook size two spoon again, Basically, if we get a hit from a char on this, it should be at least a gold, and there's potential there to catch diamonds with it. And of course, if we get into water like we were last time with brown trout and arctic char, still could get silver browns, but decent chance of those being golds. I think this is a good sized lure for these kind of fish. Maybe we'll go down a hook size if we're not catching anything, but I really want to focus on trying to get big ones. There we go, on a size three spoon though, I've seen so many big looking chars just surface around me that I couldn't help but go down one size and see if we could pull one in. This has to be a char. There's nothing in here that will hit a spoon other than them. This is like serious tension. I think we have 38 pound fluorocarbon on here. I'm not gonna say this is gonna be a diamond or anything because I think it already would hit the size two spoon, but I can 100% see small gold easily the way this is fighting. Just bringing the drag all the way to 95%. I thought we could just basically overpower it and drag it in, but not so much. <laughs> this is a pretty good sign. I didn't get to see the size of the fish. Like, I could see it move over to take the lure, but oh, that is a pretty big one. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, that is a nice size char. Let's just kind of drag him over in this way. 
We've got him into 10 feet? Could that potentially be a gold? I think it's got a, a definite chance at it. Finally landed him there. That's a silver at 14.3 pounds. Gold is right in that area. That was a heck of a fight to put up. So we'll go back to the size two spoon. And good to know like the big char we've been seeing surfacing are probably in that range, like 14, 15 pounds. And we'll keep on trying this. I think this is a good spot. I'm seeing them everywhere. Just gotta bring our spoon past a slightly bigger one. I think we got one chasing this. We definitely got one chasing this. Now that has to be a little more like what we're after. This is the size two spoon. And at 65% drag, we are doing nothing. So we'll bring this up. I think we can pretty safely do that. But we're not going to get too crazy only because this is a bigger size lure. And we've been at this little lake probably for 20 minutes. Casting into every little nook and cranny we could to try to pull something out of here. Even at 80% drag. This guy is... You can feel the difference between this and the last one. I'm going to bring it up a little bit more and just try to haul him in here. I think whether he likes it or not, look at him. Compared to the last one, that looks pretty darn good. But if we just go ahead and start pumping, I think we'll get him in. That is a nice looking char. I don't know what our personal best is. That is a gold at almost 17 pounds. So we got that gold token from that. Not bad. I, if this is correct, and I've seen it be kind of weird before, our personal best was just about a half pound shy of that, and I think we've caught maybe one gold char in the past. But I like it. We're going to keep on casting out here. If we can catch more golds, great. Maybe a potential for diamond as well. I don't know how big they get. I'm thinking 20 pounds-ish area. But that came from, like, right off the bank. So maybe that's what we got to do is, like, kind of go back around. It's the one thing I haven't maybe done as much is cast right up against the edge of the water. So keeping things moving, I think we might have finally found our perfect spot. So this down here is a lake that has both brown trout and arctic char, and that should not only result in us catching more fish, but gives us potential to land two of the diamonds that I want most here on Norway. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just cast over there right at the start of that waterfall in case. I saw a big fish in there, but I kind of think it might have just been like an average sized brown trout. But they're definitely in there, and whether they hit this or not, I like where we're at better now than at the last spot. Ooh, there we go. We've not made it all the way around to grab a boat just yet. I can't help but cast every couple of feet. We're just slowly walking around. This is easier to bring in than that char. So I'm thinking, actually I can tell by the, the fish in the water there, probably a silver brown trout. Gotta assume it does look really big, but silver for brown trout goes up to nearly 20 pounds. So I think that's going to be what we're looking at. Can we land this guy? We've got him at six feet. That's going to work. And that is definitely what we're looking at. 15 pounds, not a bad fish. And that's essentially what I'm hoping for from this area. If we can land a couple of those guys intermittently and hopefully still catch some decent char then we're going to be in a really good position because it gets a little bit monotonous. I don't remember how long exactly we fished the last spot, but essentially we caught one fish. If we didn't switch to that smaller spoon, the one gold, which was awesome. Hopefully we can catch more of those. But if we can have some silver brown trout in between and still a chance of big ones, I think this is the spot for us. I like it. Getting a little consistency out of this. And this time, that might be a char just kind of based on the way that tension was maybe it's another brown trout that is a brown trout for sure so probably another 13 14 pound or somewhere in there but it was a little bit different this time it was like the tension kind of maxed out and we were almost at that sort of standstill they look <laughs> just huge when they're in the water they usually don't look quite as big once you've landed them and still despite the fact that we've got plenty of equipment had a hard time actually getting them out of there now that one's 18 and a half pounds so interesting, notably bigger, but I don't think he put as much tension on the line. It was like the way the interaction was different. I was not prepared for that music. Is that every level? I don't remember that at level 40 at all. So actually it turns out 
there is no way to get a boat at this particular lake, which I don't know if I've shown it on the map, but it's basically the farthest south lake that you can get to. And therefore, I'm glad that we didn't run all the way around, that we actually spent the time fishing along the bank. And this is a spot I definitely want to come back to. So I've just put a size 5 spoon on here. I figure we could probably catch something on this cast. Looks like maybe a bronze char. But with the nearly hours spent getting the legendary salmon and then all the time just going along cast after cast here, we've been here for about three hours and I think that's going to be our last fish of the video. So I actually want to basically end the game here so that we're back at this lake and can continue fishing here next time because I think it's a really good spot that I definitely want to spend more time in. But on that note, that is going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you next time.